The top stories tonight in Y News. The Department of Foreign Affairs officially confirms the death of another Filipino in an attack by the Palestinian Hamas militant group. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. shares frustration amid reported hacking incidents in government agencies. The Makabayan Bloc explores the possibility of filing charges against former President Rodrigo Duterte concerning death threats made against one of his salons. And the European Commission warns social media companies, including Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter, about its policies and severe penalties after Hamas attacks on Israel. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, October 13, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and other parts of the world. I am Mariela Toza. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Marvi Delphine. Sad news. The Department of Foreign Affairs has confirmed the death of another Filipino due to an attack by the Palestinian Hamas militant group. This information has been conveyed to the family and even President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is now aware of the fate of our Filipino countrymen caught in the conflict between Israel and the Hamas group. Nel Maribohok reports. Three Filipinos have now been confirmed to have lost their lives due to the attack by the Hamas militant group in Israel. Foreign Affairs Under Secretary Eduardo De Vega reported that the casualty is a 49-year-old caregiver. I regret to inform you that yes, it is confirmed there is a third Filipino casualty. A 49-year-old woman from Negros Occidental. According to Yusek De Vega, the latest Filipino fatality was among the attendees of a music festival where Hamas reportedly attacked. There were a lot of uh, people uh, who were killed attending that music festival, uh, which, was, which is usually held during the Sukkot, which is an Israeli uh, uh, holiday. You know? And uh, what we understand, she was one of the attendees and a lot of people died there. There are still three other missing Filipinos, but the DFA is optimistic that they will be found. The DFA is pushing for a humanitarian corridor between Gaza and Egypt due to the ongoing blockade on the Israel-Gaza border. Of the 131 Filipinos in Gaza, 92 wish to return home. Mel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The reports of data breach incidents against government agencies are increasing. Meanwhile, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. is frustrated over the issue. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Government agencies as well as private entities must ensure their security measures are according to standard. This amid the reports of data leak incidents among government agencies. First, we make sure up to standard yung mga security measures. We're not saying bilhin mo yung pinakamahal, yung pinakalatest. Dapat reasonable and appropriate. Kasi walang foolproof ka system. Pero you can put in place security measures para pahirapin mo naman yung attack. Recently, the Department of Science and Technology or DOSD revealed the recent data breach incident involving the One Expert Portal on August 31, 2023. The portal contains technical experts and their email addresses as well as portal users and their email addresses also. Based on the investigation, a compromised account may have been used to access the site. On October 8, 2023, some data that resembled those from the site was posted on Facebook. DOST assures no sensitive personal information has been compromised and additional security measures were put in place. NPC has also reminded offices and institutions not to collect personal data if this could not be protected. Security measures in place that, that is up to par, up to standard. Uh, when you process personal information, uh, 
uh, make sure sakto lang, don't, don't over collect. And the pinaka basic, no, uh, nagi namin sila sa me. If you, if you cannot protect, don't collect in the first place. Data breaches have been reported against Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA as well as Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. Meanwhile, according to Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT Undersecretary Jeffrey E.N.D., President Bongbong Marcos Jr. is frustrated over data leaks in government agencies. He also directed the ICT to strengthen its defenses and be proactive. They also mentioned the suspect who posted and leaked the data from PSA and DOST is the same. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Transport Group Manibela has announced its intent to pursue charges against suspended LTFRB Chairman Guadiz and Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista. However, the group intends to include Jeff Tumabado, the whistleblower who shed light on the alleged corruption within the agency. JP Nunez details why. Mar Valbuena of the Transport Group Manibela is considering to file charges against Jeff Tumbado, the whistleblower of the alleged corruption in the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB who recently recants his allegations. According to Valbuena, some of the leaders of Transport Cooperative or Corporation disclosed that Jeff Tumbado is involved in the alleged illegal activity in the agency. Kasama talaga siya dun sa kakasuhan nitong mga kliyente na to. Siyempre, uh, involved siya dun eh. However, Valbuena still believed that Tumbado has just been forced to recant his allegations. He said that they had several conversations and Tumbado is really determined to expose the corruption in LTFRB. Naniniwala kami na may nakialam dito para ho umatras yung ating whistleblower. Hindi ho kami naniniwala ito na kusa lang siyang bumawi at kusa lang siyang uh, natakot lang siya dahil sa kanyang pamilya. Dahil nung nag-usap kami, ang sinasabi niya sa akin, laban na to, tuloy ito, hindi ako aatras, lalabanan ko to, isisiwalat ko yung totoong pangyayari sa loob ng ahensya. Even if Tumbado withdraw his accusations, Valbuena said they will still file charges against suspended LTFRB Chairman Guadis and Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista. They intend to take legal action after their planned transport strike next Monday. Originally, siya talaga yung magpa-file ng kaso. Kailangan lang naming suportahan yon. gawa nitong mga client namin na susuporta din doon sa kanyang aligasyon. So kung wala na si Mr. Tumbado, wala na yung uh, main man na magsasampan nito. Pero ang sabi sa akin ng mga kliyente nila na mga kasamahan din namin, sila na ang magsasampan ng kaso. Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista recently denied the allegations of Valbuena. On Monday, October 16, participants of the transport strike will gather at the UP Diliman at around 7 a.m. They will conduct a program before they continue their strike up to the central office of the LTFRB in East Avenue, Quezon City. There will be simultaneous protests at the Mindiola in Manila which will be attended by members of Manibela from southern part of Metro Manila. They expect around 1,000 units of traditional jeepney to stop operation by Monday who will be joining transport strike. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine government has deported this evening 36 illegal Chinese nationals who previously worked in a Philippine offshore gaming operator or Pogo Hub in Pasay City. Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission or PAOCC spokesperson director Winston Cash has said all of the deportees are bound to Nanning, China. After deportation, the Bureau of Immigration or BI will include them in the blacklisted individuals. Lilinawin po namin ha, yung pogo nung una, legal po sila. Kaya lang, kinansila po, gawa nung nakita namin na yung kanilang mga ginagawang activities ay hindi ayon doon sa kanilang permit. Kaya ito, undesirable agent, aliens sa po lahat ito. Kansilado lahat ang passport nila. 
Castro added the last deportation process would be on Friday next week from those apprehended Pogo workers in the SKK building, Pasay City. And for the news abroad, the International Criminal Court, or ICC, has declared it has jurisdiction over the Gaza Strip and other occupied Palestinian territories. This gives them authority to prosecute the Hamas militant group, even with Israel not being a member state. Jane Robles will tell us the details live. Yes, Jane, good evening. Good evening, Marielle. The International Criminal Court, or ICC, is a court of last resort for its 123 member states. Whenever the member states do not want or are unable to prosecute individuals for alleged criminal conduct, the ICC does it. Israel, along with China, the United States, Russia, India, and Egypt, are among non-member states. The ICC, however, has declared that the Gaza Strip falls under its jurisdiction in the current situation, the same way allegations of war crimes in the area committed in 2014 were also declared as under the ICC. The ICC, therefore, can prosecute the Hamas militants for the latest attack on Gaza. According to ICC Prosecutor Karim Khan, if there is evidence of crimes committed by Palestinians anywhere, including Israel, the ICC has jurisdiction to prosecute them, whether they are Hamas or any other person. On the other hand, he described the images coming out of the brutal attacks as heartbreaking and encourage a legal process to determine criminal liability. However, the criminal court does not have police power over non-members. Even if it were to issue warrants in the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine, the court is reliant on member states to execute arrest. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Jane Robles, for that live report. Meanwhile, France President Emmanuel Macron urges his countrymen not to add national divisions to international divisions, but rather to stay united in light of the war between Israel and the Hamas militants. A ban on pro-Palestinian rallies has been declared by Interior Minister Gerald Darmanin, defiance of which could result to arrest because they are susceptible to disrupt public order. However, despite the ban, a 3,000-strong rally went ahead Thursday at Plaza de la Republique, where police arrested 10 protesters and used water cannons to disperse the demonstrators who were chanting, Israel murderer and Palestine will win, while waving Palestinian flags. Reports confirm 13 French citizens have died from Hamas group's attack on Israel last Saturday, while 17 nationals are still missing, including four children. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Makabayan bloc is looking into filing of charges against former President Rodrigo Duterte over his death threats to one of his Solons. In a televised interview, the former chief executive said that the confidential funds being requested by her daughter, Vice President Sara Duterte, are intended for restoring Mandatory Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, and for fighting insurgency. The first target, according to the older Duterte, is ACT Teachers Party List Representative Francis Castro and the Communists. Assistant Minority Leader and Gabriela Party List Representative Arlene Brosses condemns this, saying that it is a blatant violation and a dangerous attack on the rights of individuals who are advocating for transparency and accountability in government spending. She says they will not be silenced by threats and intimidation, adding that they are looking into possible legal actions against the older Duterte. For his part, Senator Ronald, Senator Ronald De La Rosa, a known Duterte ally, says the opposition lawmakers can file complaints all they want. 
but he believes the remarks of the former president was only a figure of speech. Patayin yung kausa, patayin yung uh, ideolohiya. Uh, alam naman natin yung figure of speech ang ginagawa ni Pangulong uh, Duterte. Hindi naman actually murder ang uh, ibig sabihin. No? Buti yun, kasi sabihin mo si Franz Castro yun. Kayo, kayo Franz Castro et al. Kayo ang uh, target nito. Yung, uh, kung ano nyo, yung... Uh, yung inyong kaliwa, yung inyong koneksyon sa kaliwa, kailangan may bisiso na yan at para mahinto yung panluluko nyo sa taong bayan. The Department of Justice, or DOJ, revealed a new extortion scheme at the Bureau of Immigration perpetrated by BI personnel. Dante Amento explains why. Department of Justice or DOJ Secretary Crispin Rimulia disclosed that Bureau of Immigration personnel are into a new modus operandi called escort fee. Undesirable or blacklisted foreigners still allowed to enter and leave the country if they allegedly pay 150,000 pesos. May info kami na sa blacklisted persons na nakaka-travel out or in, 150,000 pesos na ang presyo ng isang uh, escort service sa blacklisted persons. Rimulia believes the same people are involved in this scheme with those previous illegal activities in the Bureau. The DOJ chief likened the scheme to the Pastilla scheme where undocumented foreigners allowed to come in after paying a certain amount of bribe money. Parang ganon, parang we're looking at a rehash and recycling of people who are, who were, who probably uh, cannot wait anymore to earn their money or earn the money they want to earn uh, working at immigration. The DOJ and BI are now in collaboration to investigate this act and be held accountable the perpetrators. The DOJ is also eyeing the movement of BI personnel as one move to solve the problem. Ano to? We have to look at the structure again eh, on how it happens. So yun ang pinag-aaralan namin ulit. At uh, we will be pursuing uh, uh, a movement of people again within immigration and reorganize many of the things uh, there. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The remains of Margaret Garcia, the overseas Filipino worker tragically slain in Saudi Arabia, have been repatriated to the Philippines. Bernadette Dinoy will tell us why. The Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, or OWA, is making preparations to hold a hero's welcome for the remains of Margaret Garcia, the overseas Filipino worker tragically slain in Saudi Arabia. Si Margaret, yung mahal na mahal ng kanyang amo, at uh, hindi lamang tayo naglulok siya, kundi pati yung kanyang mga Arab na mga uh, employers. Uh, sa kwento sa amin, parang nagkakaingitan eh. Kasi nga, mahal na mahal siya nung ano, mahal na mahal siya nung kanyang ano, amo eh. So, sa trabaho, binibigay sa kanya yung mga personal, mag-aang, binagdagan siya ng isa pang kasama para nga gumaang yung kanyang trabaho. So, ang uh, iyon, uh, doon nagsimula. OWA Administrator Arnel Ignacio affirmed the agency's commitment to providing the fullest possible assistance to Marjorie's grieving family. This support encompasses a comprehensive range of aid, including financial assistance, livelihood support, and scholarship programs. In addition to extending assistance to the family, always closely monitoring the legal proceedings in Saudi Arabia. Authorities there have taken custody of the suspect involved in the murder of Marjorie, underscoring the importance of bringing the perpetrator to justice. Bernadette Tinoy, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Sugar Regulatory Administration, or SRA, is taking proactive measures in response to a concerning trend. The SRA has decided to convert more than 100,000 metric tons of imported sugar for domestic use. Administrator Pablo Azgona highlighted a significant drop in the farm gate price of raw sugar, plummeting by nearly 300 pesos per bag within a week. This rapid decline has prompted the SRA to investigate potential issues within the value chain. They are keen to understand why the reduction in farm gate prices is not being mirrored in retail prices.
This decline in sugar prices comes at the onset of the milling season, which began in September. The SRA is closely monitoring the situation, recognizing the potential adverse impact on farmers if prices continue to plummet. This will discourage farmers to plant, and without the farmers, our mills will suffer as well. So we have to ensure the local supply. In a move aimed at supporting local rice farmers, the local government unit of Santa in Ilocos Sur is providing an additional 3 pesos cash incentive to rice farmers who sell their unhusked rice or palay to the National Food Authority or NFA. On top of the NFA's buying price of 23 pesos per kilo, a farmer or farmer organization can now earn 3 pesos more bringing the total to 26 pesos per kilo when selling clean and dry palay to the NFA through this initiative. Santa stands at the pioneering local government unit to formalize such an arrangement by signing a memorandum of agreement with the NFA for the implementation of the palay marketing assistance for legislators and local government units or PALGU. Palgu is a program established by the NFA that enables farmers to increase their profits. However, its successful implementation depends on the level of support and participation from legislators and local government units. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, has issued a show-cause order to 80 candidates in the city of San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. This action has been taken due to alleged early campaign activities in anticipation of the upcoming Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections or BSKE. Attorney Imelda Panis, the election officer of San Jose del Monte, has reported receiving numerous complaints from concerned citizens who have taken to social media to raise their objection against these candidates' ultimately campaigning practices. Yung mga candidates na nagpo-post dun sa kanilang mga Facebook, TikTok, na may mga t-shirts, na mga nakalagay yung mga pangalan, uh, yung mga nag-iikot na dun sa mga may mga tarpulin na naka-display. So, yun ang uh, nagsisime, nagsisend dyan sa law department na mga pictures. And then the law department, uh, will issue a show cause order and then dito kami sa field within 48 hours. In response, the Comelec office in San Jose del Monte has taken a quick action by issuing show cause orders to 80 candidates. Some have already faced dismissal while others are awaiting the final decision by the Comelec. Nakaserve na namin sila, nakapag, naiserve na lahat yun. Uh, meron din namang mga order, meron lumabax na mga order of dismissal. Ibig sabihin, hindi naman lahat ng nabibigyan ng show cause orders, eh may kaso na. So, based dun sa kanilang answer na sinabit dun sa law department o dun sa task force, task force against premature campaigning, In the wake of the Israel-Gaza conflict, a deluge of graphic content and rampant misinformation inundated the realms of social media. The European Commission, with a stern hand, cautioned major platforms such as Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter, outlining their policies and potential severe penalties. Maven Carizo tells us why. European Commission's digital regulators warned on Wednesday, 11 October, top social media companies including Facebook, TikTok, YouTube and X, formerly known as Twitter, after large volume of Israel-Gaza-related graphics and misinformation surged on their platforms. European industry chief Thierry Breton urged Elon Musk and Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg to ensure strict compliance with European laws or else face severe penalties. The 
companies were given 24 hours to take action and to walk the talk or report to the European Union on how they were stopping the harmful contents. X has removed hundreds of Hamas affiliated accounts and thousands of contents, but their safety team pushed back, saying that the company's approach was transparent. They also assembled a leadership group to assess the situation shortly after the attack. Meta spokesperson reported that the company were monitoring the situation in real time. YouTube spokesperson told the news agencies that some graphic content may be allowed if it provides sufficient documentary value about the conflict. TikTok, meanwhile, according to experts, was tagged almost as bad as X, as the platform has never been known as a vital source for real-time information about the current news. European commissions also sought to remind social media companies that the content moderations is a core part of the digital service. Services Act, an EU law that legally requires tech platforms to monitor violent content. Rule breakers will face up to 6% of global revenue or even temporary suspension of their services in the EU. Maybe Kari saw you interview news and rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In the serene landscapes of New Zealand, a charming couple graciously opens the gates to their splendid English cherry tree manor, inviting all to behold the mesmerizing display of cherry blossoms and a myriad of blooming flowers. This spectacle unfolds as part of the Cherry Blossom Festival, a celebration with a global tapestry of culture highlighted by the remarkable talents of Filipino youth. Monica Panlas tells us why. Spring has already sprung in New Zealand. During this season, one of the must-visit destinations is the English Cherry Tree Manor owned by the couple Paul Alton and Anne Cow, located in Tamahiri, Hamilton. The couple welcomes the public to experience the splendor of cherry trees, bluebells and various plants during the spring season. I'm from England and in England it's famous for its bluebell puts out spring. And the bluebells flower at the same time as cherry blossoms. So we've been planting lots of bluebells and it's really getting quite spectacular now. The bluebells, there's a carpet of blue covering the ground underneath the trees. The cherry trees remain in full bloom for three weeks, attracting thousands of visitors each year. So we've got seven and a half thousand people. Uh, we were expecting 9,000, uh, but we haven't had one good weather day yet. The Cherry Blossom Festival offers visitors to experience musical traditions accompanied by traditional instruments as they explore the gardens and entertained with a number of dance performances from various cultures. And of course, you can't miss out on the captivating Filipino folk dance. For three years now, the Waikato Filipino Association has been gracing the Cherry Blossom Festival with their performances. The youth performed the Hota di Paragua to the enchanting tunes of Filipino traditional music, showcasing their remarkable talent. We are representing Waikato Filipino Association in Hamilton. We are really uh, happy now to participate in this multicultural event. The Filipino kids and teens has just performed a Filipino dance. This is a good opportunity because we're giving um, the children a chance to perform. The parents of these youths desire that their children, even when raised and living in a foreign land, still connect with their heritage. Monica Canlas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. In a thrilling match, the AFP is just one victory away from clinching the championship title in the inaugural season of the UNTV Volleyball League. In the recent Game 1 of the final series held yesterday, the Lady Gunner emerged victorious, defeating the Senate Lady Defenders in three consecutive sets. Rina Villamore Camera reports. of the UNTV Volleyball League Finals started at the Phil Oil Arena featuring the undefeated AFB Lady Gunners and Senate Lady Defenders. It was an exciting first set for the two teams between the Senate Lady Defenders and the AFB Lady Gunners. The Senate was led by 
by their import cat Vallegas who gave 10 important points for the team. Meanwhile, John Buna for the AFP Lady Gunners who gave 12 attack points for the team. But because of the drop balls given by the Lady Gunners, they have dominated the first set at 25 to 17. In the second set, Coach Roger Gorayev replaced Villegas with Grace Palabrica. The Senate team made more errors, that's why the set ended at 25 to 17. Come third set, the Senate tried to keep the game close with the help of Sheila Cecilio and Villegas. Great ball saves and long rallies were executed, but due to coverage errors by Sana, the AFP still got the win in three straight sets at 26 to 24. In total, the Lady Gunners released more attack points, which reached 46 compared to the 28 given by the Senate. Joan Bunag scored 19 points for the Lady Gunners and was awarded best player of the game. Watch out for Game 2 of the Finals this Sunday, October 15, to be held at the Phil Sports Arena at 4 o'clock p.m. Before the game, the much-anticipated Goodwill game in which the PNP and DFA will work together against the teams of Judiciary and Ombudsman. The Goodwill game will feature your favorite collegiate players such as March Pepito, Main Cruz, Yam Porio, Alarmi Pesebre, J.M. Palarca, Barbie Tejada, and Team Bancola. Awardings will follow here for Best Import, Best Setter, Best Open Spiker, Seasons MVP and others. The award will also include the selected beneficiaries of the team in this only league of the public servants. Rina Valiamor Camera, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with the word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. And those are the reasons behind the news October 13, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Marvie Delphine, live from Australia. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza, live from Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God.